Can you hear me? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, oops. So, so I talk today about developing medical software in, in Haskell and in Scala. Um, so it's a kind of, of experience report. I will tell you what we did um, in our company for the last two years or so. Um, developing a real world application in Haskell and Scala. And this kind of experience report then naturally leads to a kind of comparison between Haskell and Scala. So the, the project I'm going to talk about is an electronic health record system with about 37,000 lines of Scala code and about 55,000 lines of Haskell code. Um, well, I mean, I won't convince you that functional programming is the right thing, that, that's um, something this talk is uh, not going to touch. I think we take it for granted. So I think, I hope that's okay. We are a small company based in Freiburg, Germany. We have four employees and five or six um, freelancers working for us. We are developing in general mobile applications for the healthcare market. Um, the company was founded more than 10 years ago. We have a quite mature product, um, which is written in non-functional non languages. So the server part of this other product is written in Python and the client in, in Java. But our new product, um, development started for this product in 2010, um, is written, well, I mean, it's an electronic health record system in, for the iPad and the iPhone, so the client part is written in Objective-C, but all the server part is written in, in functional languages. So because this is a kind of experience report and also a comparison it is kind of subjective by definition, I would say so it's always good um, to know um, um, to know the person who is who is giving his um, who is sharing his experience. So I'm a kind of programming language guy. I did my PhD in programming languages. Um, I'm a Haskell user since uh, nearly 10 years now, and a Scala user since uh, 2009. And when I finished my PhD, I then started to, to work in industry. So that was oops, that's not what I wanted. Good. So let's have a look at the project I'm going to talk about. I've already said it's an electronic health record running on the iPad, on the iPhone. And the idea is that it should give doctors basically access to all, all kind of data which um, doctors need for doing their daily work. So here's a screenshot. The application you see here, uh, I think it's a CT scan. Um, well, so all kind of data, radiology images, lab reports, patient data, whatever doctor needs. Um, development started in 2010, as I said before. Uh, I think. Uh, you move the last cursor, maybe? It's just sitting on it. Wait. No, it's, it's not a problem. Okay, so, anyway, doesn't matter. It's not a. Well, no, it's great. <laughs> Good. A plan written in Objective C because it's an iOS application, but the server is written exclusively in Scala and Haskell. So, here's a short overview of the system architecture. We have over here, um, there are um, just the IT system of the hospital. So they use a whole bunch of technologies for providing access to the data. There are, often you can simply um, access the SQL database directly, or there is HL7 messaging going on. Oh, sorry. Um, um, images are most of the time feed for the DICOM standard. Hospitals are also using SAP for storing patient data, and they are, um, use also all kind of um, internally developed software. So our system consists of then two components. There is a component called the data server, right here. That's um, a component written in Scala, and the purpose of this component is simply um, import all data from the hospital and bring it in a, into a standardized format. So this for um, the standardized format is then here written out in XML documents and the synchronization server, which is written in Haskell, basically reads this data in um, reads the standardized data, and does some processing and then synchronizes it to the iPads over here. So the iPads are supposed to work offline, so there's some synchronization mechanism going on. Um, to give a rough uh, some rough performance numbers. 
So um, for, for now, we are a typical installation deals with um, 170 patients, I mean, I mean active, active patients, um, because it's a typical size of the department. Um, the, um, the, the most part of the data is compromised by images, so there are about 150 images per patient, but patients with CT scans or MRI, or MRI series can have, I mean, they can have 5,000 images <coughs> easily. So, HSL measures thing, we have about 334,000 uh, HSL measures per day, and if you start with a fresh iPad, there's about 2 gigabyte of data to be synchronized onto the iPad. So, as I said before, we use Haskell for this synchronization part. Um, when, we, when we read the data, we first do some processing to bring the data into the right shape for the iPad, and then we transfer these documents to the iPad, um, and we make sure that when there's an update, each iPad gets an update. Um, so, when we, I mean, We've now written this rather large Haskell application, set for us 55,000 lines of code. So here's what we like about Haskell, and probably also an explanation about why we like it. I mean, I think many of us know that Haskell is a very expressive language, so you can really express um, a lot in very few lines of code. It has a, a rich static type system which prevents many errors right from the start. Um, what's also nice about Haskell is, or what, what we found nice about Haskell, and really quite important for us, is its fine-grained static control over all kinds of side effects. And, I mean, one thing here is that immutability is kind of the default in Haskell. Um, this gives you a very good support for testing, but also um, very good support for concurrency. I mean, this whole synchronization thing, I mean, there are many iPads connect to the server, so the server has um, multiple threads, also threads for, for reading data and so on, so that was really, um, Haskell was really, is really very good at this. So we have STM, software transaction memory, and we use Haskell lightweight threads, which lets you easily spawn, I don't know, a million or so threads, that's not a problem at all. And one last thing, um, we really like about Haskell is the community is very active and and very helpful. So I mean, we got feedback directly from the GMC main developers when we had a problem. So that's 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 really good. I mean, we really feel kind of of safe inside this community. Some things we we, we don't quite like about Haskell is um, to a certain extent laziness can be problematic. So there are space leaks and kind of unexpected behavior, and because of the second point here, which is um, Haskell lacks, uh, I guess, I, I think Haskell lacks decent support for runtime monitoring and profiling, these, these space leaks are not that easy to, to detect. Um, well, good. Then package management with Kabbalah is, is a bit of a problem, I mean, it takes with a, with a fresh um, operating system installation take me maybe two hours or maybe just three hours to get um, the development chain up and running. Um, it needs um, some manual intervention, so that's, that's not so nice. And the learning curve is all quite steep. We have a pretty um, smart student, but it took him, I don't know, until he really could. could um, could start with Haskell, it took, him, it took him some time, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, so good. That's, that's not so good. Okay, so the other thing is now Haskell for the synchronization server, and we have SCADA for the data server. So the data server was this component which basically imports all data from the hospital systems. It needs to deal with several so called standards. So there's HL7, which is a kind of standard, but Every hospital does it a little bit different. Um, SQL, DICOM, SAP, whatever, and there's also a lot of hospital-specific in-house developed software. Um, and for this scenario, it's really a kind of 
good thing if you can interface with Java because um, for many of these standards there are Java libraries available which you can then use very easily to, to just import the data. And that's really a, a probably the reason also why we choose Scala because the Scala is really, um, well, it's kind of integrated into the language. You just take the Java file, put it in the class class, and then you can work with the Java objects and the Java methods as if they, they were um, Scala objects and methods. So, um, I mean, in, in many ways, Scala is, is kind of similar to Haskell. I mean, Scala has an object oriented and a functional part, but I mean, you can you can also view Scala as a function language and mainly forget about this object part if you like. So it's also, I think it's kind of equally expressive and has the, it also has a very <coughs> nice static type system. Um, I would say, I mean, for Haskell I said immutability is kind of the default. That's not the case in Scala, but it, at least it favors immutability over immutability. It's a function language. Um, the build system in Scala, I think it's, it's kind of simpler than, than Cabal, but it works really well. So if I start with the first machine, it takes me 20 minutes and I can no manual intervention and I can start, uh, can get started um, developing my application. We have the whole world of Java APIs available and um, because it's so deeply um, um, integrated into this Java world, it has all monitoring capabilities that exist for the JVM. You can also use, use for Scala. There are runtime profilers, debuggers, whatever you like. Um, and, well, another advantage is that if you have a Java programmer and you want him to or her to program Scala, then it takes a day or two and then they can be productive. There are also some things about Scala which I think are nice. I mean, we try them out, but we only use them occasionally, so my opinion is not that strong that actors and SCM, they, they also seem to, to play quite well with Scala. So the, the things we don't really like about Scala is, oh, which is not so good. Um, you don't have this kind of static control or side effects as it has to. <laughs> so, I mean, some would say that's a good thing that you can do uh, mutual variables all over the place, but so if you are accustomed to Haskell, you feel a bit unsafe. There can everywhere these unsafe things. And another point is, so Scala is really quite a complex language, and I think that's mainly due to, or at least the type system, that's mainly due to subtyping. Because I mean, Haskell has already a quite complicated type system, and I think Scala has, in addition, the subtype which really complicates things a lot. Um, you have always, in Scala, you can always kind of choose between should I do my data modeling the object oriented style and design a fancy task hierarchy, or should I go with the um, algebraic data type approach like, say, Haskell. And then there is this, for example, the strange equality operation in Scala, which simply compares two values of any type for equality. So we I think a number of times we had a bug that we were comparing a value of type string with a value of type option string. I mean, these two things are never going to be equal, but Java, uh, sorry, Scala simply lets you write this equality without um, uh, raising a type error. And another kind of disadvantage is, I mean, I've said before that it's an advantage that Java programmers adopt Scala very quickly, but that's also some, also some kind of disadvantage because I mean, in one or two days, if you are a Java programmer and then you do Scala programming, basically in one or two days, the thing, what, what you're going to do is basically be writing your Java program in Scala syntax. So to really, um, to really learn how to do functional programming and to use the power of functional programming, it, it takes some more time. And I think if you really want to learn it, then it often helps if, if you do it in a language where you can't, can't fall, fall back to the to your usually usual um, object oriented style program. So, so in some sense that's also a disadvantage. Good. So here's based on these experience, I made a kind of comparison table. I think in, in a summary, 
both languages are kind of kind of great. So um, I think you, you won't make a wrong decision if you pick either Haskell or Scala. Um, so the, the main points where Haskell and Scala differs from from my point of view is um, Haskell offers much better control over side effects. Um, the community is in Haskell from my point of view much more helpful. I mean, I put a question mark here because we did not have that much experience in interacting with the Scala community, but two or three times we, we gave a bug report and, well, people were quite unfriendly. I mean, from our point of view it was really a bug, but then they tried to argue, oh, it's not a bug, blah, 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 blah. So, but, but that's, <laughs> that's a prison. So here, um, in, in this column, Scala is, in my opinion, better. The so laziness in Haskell is lazy. Scala is strict, but in Scala you can also um, annotate certain method parameters or certain instance variables as, as lazy. So, for, in some situations, this is, this is more convenient, I think. Runtime monitoring is really a big plus on the, on the Scala side and package managing and interfacing with Java APIs as well. If you want to interface or need to interface with the C API, I think I would go for Haskell because the API is, is, is a really great tool. Um, for Scala, I think nobody wants to use the Java language interface. Um, so, before wrapping up, here it is, um, here are two slides just to show you that it is quite easy to transfer your ideas from Haskell to Scala. Um, so when, when we deal with serialization and deserialization in our company, um, we took this Haskell Symposium 2010 paper um, where they describe um, a kind of library um, which means you can write a specification which does serialization and deserialization at the same time. This library we call it Roundtrip. We started with a Haskell implementation of this library um, and then ported this Haskell implementation to Scala. There are various backends that is serialization formats. There is text or XML or also HTTP. So just to show you how the Haskell code and the Scala code looks like, I've uh, written two specifications, one in Haskell and one in Scala, to um, serialize into this um, XML document. So there's an item, an ID, a report date, and a service provider. And here's the Haskell specification. I mean, I won't go into details here, but you see here, to specify there must be an element called item with an attribute ID and optional elements we project the service provider. And here's the Scala code. So, I mean, it looks quite, uh, quite the same. So, I mean, the operators are a bit different here and here, and also here and here, but apart from that, um, I think that kind of counts as being on the sequel. So, so that's, that's really nice. I mean, I said before that the two languages are not that much different. So, good. To summarize, um, <coughs> we found that both Haskell and Scala are really very good tools for, for commercial software development. Um, in a sense, Haskell is somewhat simpler. That's I, I guess it's mainly because there is no subtyping involved. Involved. You have the static control over side effects, which is, in my opinion. Um, really great. Laziness can be a problem. I mean, over time we got accustomed to it, so I think now we're fine. And if you if you want to use Haskell, um, you must take it in, into account that the learning curve is, is quite steep. So you need some time to um, get really accustomed to it. In Scala, you have kind of uncontrolled side effects. So if this makes you safe, unsafe, you should better use Haskell. Um, but you have direct access to Java APIs and to all the monitoring capabilities provided by the JVM. Um, and the learning curve is some, somewhat smoother because, well, it's, it's um, similar to Java, so if you know Java, then it's not a touch. Good, so that's for now. Any questions?